Hi, my name is Tracy Brady, and I'm a pre-K instructional coach for Harford County Public Schools. And this video is about talking all about bedtime routines and how to set up a routine to help your child sleep through the night and go to bed easily. So let's get started. So we are going to talk about why a bedtime routine is important some strategies for bedtime, and also the benefits of reading to your child before bed. Research tells us that an American Academy of Sleep Medicine recommends the following amounts of sleep for the age group. This always surprises me as to how much sleep a child really needs. So for a four to 12 month old, you need 12 to 16 hours of sleep. A one to two year old, 11 to 14 hours. A three to five year old, 10 to 13 hours. Six to 12 year old, nine to 12 hours. And 13 to 18, eight to 10 hours. So we're talking about early childhood. So we're looking really at the ages of three to five and one to two, which is about 11 to 14 hours a night, depending on your child. So we have to think about that when we are are developing our bedtime routine. So why do we have a bedtime routine? Well, repetition and structure really make children feel secure. When they know what to expect, they feel much more calm and ready to cooperate. It helps them develop the ability to relax themselves and self-soothe themselves. Research tells us that children that have a consistent routine will stay asleep longer and fall asleep faster. It also impacts their, your child's mood and their growth. So what we wanna do is make sure that our children get as much sleep as they need. It also talks about the American Academy of Sleep Medicine talks about that if a child does not get enough sleep, then it's, they are likely to have behavior problems in school or in daycare and suffer from inattentiveness. I know myself as a pre-K teacher, I've had many children just fall asleep during a lesson on the rug because they didn't get enough sleep the night before or during rest time. They, it would be really super hard to get them to wake up because they maybe did not have enough sleep the night before. And then when you do wake them up, they're extremely grouchy. So an important opportunity also for bedtime routines is to bond with your child, making them feel loved and just to overall healthy development of your child. It's critical. So we want to start early. Tips for calming your child down for, and ready for bed. Some things you might want to try are a warm bath. You want to dim the lights a little bit. You might want to give a massage with some lotion and help, help them just breathe gently. You can play some soft music. Um, you can also try sprinkling magic dust around the room. Kind of sounds a little crazy, but it really works. Help the room uh, not have any monsters in it. And it's just like a magical sleep room. You also want to make sure that they brush their teeth and you can set a timer so they know when it's time for them to go to sleep. So some tips for a smooth transition. Like I said, you might want to dim the lights. You want to do quiet play. So after dinner, before you're getting ready for bed or taking that bath, you don't want to rough house and run all around and get them all excited. You want to do some kind of quiet play like Legos or coloring or something like that. You want to turn off the TV. Uh, studies have shown that TV and any kind of devices like an iPad, a computer, phone, they really inhibit the melatonin that is created in your brain that helps you fall asleep. So we want to limit the amount of devices that a child is on. You might want to put on some white music, uh, no, some soft music or white noise. I know my daughter-in-law uses white noise all the time. She can't fall asleep without it, but it really helps her feel relaxed and ready to go to sleep. And of course, if your child is experiencing any teething pain or they're sick, you want to make sure you contact the doctor as to what kind of medicine might help with them. You also want to plug in a nightlight. And the biggest thing is you have to be consistent in your routine. You need to do it over and over again and try to stay with it and not change it around. That way it will work. It really will work if you just stick with it. 
You have to do something that you feel comfortable with as well. I know my cousin has a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and she swears by her routine. Those children are always do the same thing every night, and lights are out, and they go to bed around 7.30. And then it's really nice as you're getting ready to go to bed to have some snuggle time while you're reading a book. So why do we read aloud to our children? Well, number one, it builds vocabulary. It instills morals and lessons and important values. It gives you an entryway to talk about tough topics with your child as they grow. So if they were having trouble being bullied or maybe having trouble getting along with a friend or sharing, there's books out there for every topic. And if you read the book, it can help you and your child be able to talk about those things. It also encourages empathy toward others. And as you are reading, you're modeling fluency and expression for your child, which is a pre-reading skill. It also instills a lifelong love of reading. And it's also a really fun way to spend some time together as a family. I know a friend of mine, also with a young child that's four, in her bed bedtime routine, she always tells her son that they will read two books every night. And her son knows that at the, at the end of those two books, then it is time for him to turn out the lights and go to bed. And she tucks him in, kisses him goodnight, and walks out the door. Now, many parents ask me, well, what happens if my child keeps getting out of bed and they won't stay in bed? Well, if, they, if this happens when you put them to bed or even during the night when your child wakes up and maybe wants to come in and sleep with you, the suggestion is that you very calmly, very boring, like you would take them, put them back in their bed, say it is bedtime, everything's fine, you might want to leave the door open or the hall light on, make sure that night light's on or if they have a snuggle, uh, stuffed animal or blanket to help them feel safe, do that. But you want to, no matter how many times they get out of bed, you need to continue to put them back in their bed and it will work. Consistency is the key. Some things to avoid, don't drag out your bedtime routine because that will just create havoc. A lot of times children, you know, put them to bed and they come, I need a glass of water or I forgot to do something or can I have this toy? And the best thing for you to do is say, no, we have finished our routine. You have everything you need. You need to go to sleep. You have to be firm and you need to stick to it. And you also want to avoid, again, like I said, any kind of video games, watching TV, talking on phone, things like that before bed. And then caffeine, definitely don't want to have that before bed. And that includes coffee flavored ice cream and chocolate and things like that. And remember, if your child is not sleeping through the night, then neither are you. So it is for everybody's benefit that you put a bedtime routine in place. So here's a sample bedtime routine and every family, their routine is going to look different because our work hours are different and we have sports and we have a lot of things going on in our lives. But you need to do exactly what works for you in that time frame and but make sure that you stick with it. So here's an example would be family dinner around 6 to 6.45, then some quiet play for about 15 minutes, then about a half an hour for bath time, because you know our little ones love to play in the water. So that's a really fun time for them to be able to learn and play in the water. And here it even says 45 minutes. That's a little long. Um, also then we wanna get our pajamas on and then we wanna brush our teeth. And when you're having your children brush your teeth, you can have your child brush their teeth first, and then you wanna make sure that you go over and brush for them as well. So you make sure you hit all those spots in the back. And because you wanna make sure that they have good hygiene, dental hygiene, because that really affects the way they speak and their smile. And then we have a story time and then lights out. So if you're thinking about 11 to 14 hours of sleep for your child, and you have to kind of calculate, if I have to get up at six in the morning, then that means I'm probably gonna have to put them to bed at seven o'clock, which is really early. And that's probably, if that's nine, 10, that's 11 hours there. So you need to figure out what time your children need to be up in the morning and what time, so that you can calculate what time they need to go to bed. And believe me, by getting the right amount of sleep and having a routine, will make a world of difference. And your children will be bright and 
happy and ready to go. And this is a video that I was that shows and we're not going to get into it, but it shows a family eating together at the beginning of the routine, which really also encourages language development for your young child. And as you get ready for bed, you can ask them, what did you do today? What was your favorite part of the day? And you also, as you read to them, you can give them lots of questions about what is in the book or have them point to and name things in the book. So you're encouraging that language development. And then remember bedtime. And then we have a question and answer time. If anybody ever has a question about bedtime, you can always email me at tracy.brady at hcps.org. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation and got some great tips on how to establish a bedtime routine in your household.